On the 26th of May, for five days, our membership doors are open and you can join for as long as you wish. There's no contract. And even better, in May, we've got a win-win month, a refund challenge where our course is money. And if you don't like it, you get a refund, no questions asked. If you do like it, and you listen to the recordings, and you participate in the discussion, you also get a refund. (laughs) So it's a win-win. You can't lose. The only thing that you would be investing is your time, and it's my job to make sure that that time is spent in the most life-changing, transformational, mind-blowing way imaginable. So I hope you'll join us. There's no risk. Come and see what you think. Try out some of the private study courses as well and hopefully see you there. This is the Superpowered Mind podcast for inquiring individuals who are tired of the struggle for peace, happiness and clarity. I'm Claire Diamond, ready to help you explore the principles of the mind, the self and reality to unlock ultimate mental freedom. This podcast is the one to listen to if you're ready to experience the capabilities of the superpowered mind. Hi everyone, welcome to today's podcast, which is a great topic for us today. And I see with my clients and in myself that when this topic is explored, it starts a transformation in everything really, from our motivation to our relationships, to what we're wanting, what we're looking for, everything starts changing. The topic we're considering today is peace, which is so fundamental because what we can see is how the search for peace is really at the heart of so much of what we do, so much of our our actions, our words, our relationships, our our, our way of being in the world is done in order to try to bring about peace, try to bring about a, a sense of calm, a sense of openness and ease of emotional being, ease of situational being. And that's very understandable and very natural, not very logical, because that peace that we are is deeply known, you know, as a baby living completely in the present with no, no concept of past or future, no, nothing really clouding up the entire intelligence of being, the, the complete presence of consciousness that peace is is deeply known. That's that's what we are. That peace, and then, as the baby grows, there's this incredible human mind that is wired for learning, wired for bringing in rules and understandings, shortcuts that creates concepts, so that the the mind is able to manipulate mentally and imaginatively different situations to plan and to recall and to and to learn all of that when understood is and when and when used for what it's there for is nothing short of a superpower when it's not understood when all of these concepts look absolutely real then the search for peace is taking place within this this landscape of belief of past and future of what other people are thinking about us of what is necessary to do or how it's necessary to be in order to be loved or successful or valid or worthy and so the search for peace is is really taking place within a a conviction of separation there's a separate me this concept of me is absolutely looks absolutely real and the concepts in the mind that represent reality also look absolutely real and completely separate from that idea of me and yet they're all arising 
at the same time, from the same conditioning, the same learning. So there is no separation at that level, at that level of mind, that level of, of believed experience is all happening from the same conditioning, from the same program running. But a mind that has been conditioned to try to find peace, try to find home really, try to find true nature in this conviction of separation, will we'll be trying forever because it, it, it just can't be achieved. There's no, these, these are creations of mind and the mind is trying to solve them, but the, the attempt to solve them is just making them more and more real. Um, and so what happens when we're trying to bring about a, an existential peace is that the whole focus of mind is on control, really. Control of the emotional experience, you know, Peace for me represents calm, neutrality, ease, happiness. That's what I want. And so that's what I have to try and achieve in order to be peaceful. And I, and, and it looks like that emotional experience is associated with certain external factors that look again, that look completely real, completely separate. And so the, the, the search for peace from an unquestioned sense of what the mind is and of, of what we are, is entirely about control. Controlling the inner world and the external world to bring about an, an emotional experience or a mental experience, a, you know, a psychological happening that is under no one's control. And, and all that is happening is, is that there is increased vigilance about the emotions, about the experience, about the mental narrative, about the, the, the psychological experience. It's, there's, there's all the focus, all the attention is on, am I peaceful? Am I peaceful? And even in the moments in which there is peace, which, you know, momentarily everything's aligning and there's, there's just, you know, or maybe, you know, we've taken the stuff, the drugs, the alcohol, done the scrolling that switches off the mind for a bit and we're experiencing peace. But it's so fleeting, isn't it? So temporary. But in that moment, already in the moment of being peaceful, the mind is already unpeaceful because what if this goes? How can, I, how can I continue to secure this? What often happens to certain clients when they have a deep revelation of beingness or enlightenment and, and, and the, the whole system is flooded with this, with this sense of wholeness, sense of oneness. And then, and then the mind kicks back in again later with you know, with its concepts, with its searching, its resistance, its fears, needs, shame, insecurity. And so the client is trying to get back that, that profound sense of peace that it, that was once experienced. And, and now it's on this un, unfulfillable hamster wheel, trying to secure in place an emotional psychological experience it just can't it can't be done and um, and we get miserable we get so miserable in that in that search because nothing matches up to what we're trying to achieve and so in in our courses we do something completely different we start to become profoundly excited about not being peaceful <laughs> which is a bit confronting for people at first, but it makes total sense. It really makes, for so many reasons. So if we consider that the search for peace, when, when, the, when the whole motivation of being is to try to secure in place a, a fleeting emotion that, that is 
that literally there is no possibility of controlling, that ongoing attempt to control is, is a profound shrinking of the world. It, it ramps up the, the watchfulness, the vigilance, the, the attention that's put on the inner world and on the external world. It, it makes the protection of experience all the greater. And there's a shrinking away from anything that is likely to bring in any disruption. And there's a desperation to try to get hold of the thing or the person or the experience that looks like they're somehow going to bring peace in, whatever that is. It's so dysfunctional. It's, and, and really, I think that is one of the core total confusions and misunderstandings that is at the heart of the mental health crisis, is this idea that we should be peaceful and so any, when we're not peaceful, it looks like there's something wrong with us. But actually, peace is like the weather. It just comes in, moves away, goes out again. It's really of no consequence. And even better, when there is psychological resistance, when there's resentment, when there is a deep feeling of, of being separate, of this sense of identity, fragile identity that has to be protected, when there is fear and shame and need and insecurity and a sense of lack, a sense of not being complete, that on our courses is awesome because that is a sign to turn the attention into what is going on right now. So instead of backing away, which we would if, if the search for peace is paramount, then that suffering is a sign to pull up the drawbridge, protect the ego, withdraw from whichever personal situation is ruffling our, our feathers or disturbing our identity. So we're, we're contracting back into this separate identity. Now, though, the invitation is when there is that sort of suffering to hang out in it because it's a it's not physical danger that we're talking about it's egoic challenge and confrontation which has come from the wounds and the and trauma perhaps of the as as that self identity was being created so the suffering is coming about because in this moment there's a projection from the past in the form of a situation or the form of people or the form of words being said that that the identity then reacts against its own projection and that creates the stress and as long as the as long as we're trying to escape those situations or pull in the thing that is you know maybe in those situations where we're drinking alcohol or like withdrawing to scroll on our phone or shopping or taking the drugs that we use to try and silence the mind, all that does is keep the whole thing in place. But instead of turning to our, our numbing strategies, if instead when there is that level of stress and unpeace, hanging out in it to see what is actually true. So with attention that is open and is inquiring and which is asking the question what's really going on here because this suffering is telling me there's something being projected and then reacted to so let's just see let's hang out and it doesn't matter feeling that stress feeling that unpeace it's a valid sign it's an invitation to explore and so there starts to become a, a rewiring of the whole system of, of a greater and greater capacity to experience discomfort, to experience egoic confrontation or challenge, to open up really to particularly these emotions of shame, fear, insecurity and need. And instead of withdrawing, instead of running, instead of trying to control opening up with an inquiring mind. What's, what's at stake here? What is really being challenged? 
what is really being said, what's actually true. And so now those old patterns that might have been going on for decades come to an end because they they were only held in place by a mind that wasn't prepared to see what they were really about. And that was because of the search for peace, which is really understandable. Don't get me wrong, it's completely logical that we spend our lives looking for peace because we know that that's what we are. But the only thing that is creating the confusion is that that search for peace is is being done on behalf of a unquestioned identity that has to be protected when really it is that identity that ego that those layers of wounds from the past that is hiding the fact that this is peace right now whatever emotion whatever situation what we are is peace and and so the the power of really an entire rewiring in which we're no longer interested in trying to control emotions or trying to control other people or trying to control situations. Instead, we're interested in seeing what's true. Who am I? What's true? What's at stake here? What's real? These are the questions that when a mind is asking those from genuine exploration, not, we're, not, uh, we're not talking about a mind sort of pretending to ask them, but actually only interested in how can I be enlightened enough that I never have to experience anything I don't want to experience? How can I be, how can I have realizations so that I'm happy all the time? That's not an inquiring mind, that's a controlling mind. That's a mind protecting the identity. And, and, and really what we're interested in, mental health really, sanity, is a mind that, is, that has the capacity to be in the discomfort and at the same time allow everything to be up for grabs. No beliefs are beyond questioning and particularly the beliefs about what we are that spider in the web, that when it's not questioned, dictates everything. But when, it's, when that really is available, this, this deep question, really, what am I? When that's, when that's available, then it transforms all motivation. The whole basis of living is different. The purpose of, of life becomes to explore what's true. That has to be the first purpose because until that's set in place, all life is is a recurring pattern of what's believed. Projection and then resistance to that projection over and over again. So profound peace is not the control of emotions or the control of the mental narrative, the psychological experience. Profound peace is the openness to whatever emotions are going on and to 100% genuinely open inquiry into what we are and what is real. And, and that is completely transformational. Thank you, everybody. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you for listening to Superpowered Mind with me, Claire Diamond. If you want extra support in the exploration of your mind, download our exclusive subliminal recording, especially for podcast listeners, on bit.ly slash podcast subliminal.